everyone, James Mantle here bringing you yet another video. Oh my God, you guys. So in this video, I'm gonna show you my documentation of me creating my own dress for the AJ and the Queen premiere. <laughs> now, story time. When I was told about this, I was going all out. I hired my designer, Oculus, to make me a fabulous dress. And I even made a bunch of deposits for it. And then a few weeks before the premiere happened, they told us <laughs> the theme was gonna be all red everything. So that wonderful dress I had made in blue suddenly wasn't going to be useful anymore. But I'm not mad. I'm I'm not mad at all. No, no one's mad here. I took this as a challenge and I think I rose the occasion. So I'm going to show you all how I designed my fabulous ruby red dress for the AJ and the Queen premiere. <laughs> Well, hello, welcome to me making my own dress. Okay, so first things first, I had to get this tool out of the way. This was counting 42 yards of tool that I stitched through. I started by putting a basting stitch through five inches deep of the tool. You don't have to do this. I just did this as sort of a guideline so I know not to go off track because with tool, it's very easy to do that. And we are gathering it. Now, normally gathering, you do it with tool on a, like a really, really high setting for like the tension but I just started to force gather it after a certain point because I had so much tool to do. And you honestly get a better result anyway when you do a force gather. And by force gather, I mean you take the tool and start to pleat it as you feed it through the sewing needle. Now I was on a time crunch when I started to do this project. So I decided to do something I knew I could do quickly. It would also like show off my shape and look beautiful. So what I did is to cheat this was instead of using a pattern, I took a yellow dress I got from Fashion Nova that fits me perfectly. I love the shape of this dress and I laid it over my fabric and I traced around it and then cut it out. And bear in mind, this fabric is the absolute worst. It is the devil of fabrics. The sequin one, it gets everywhere. It's so hard to work with. It sheds. And when it sheds and you cut it, it's just stab. Oh, it's the worst. I hated it. Now, putting a lining in can be a bit confusing, so I'll try and walk you through it the best way I can. I feel like the easiest way to explain how I do it is like this. I take both of my fashion fabrics, the one that's going to be on the outside. I have those two face each other. And then I take my lining pieces and lay those on the front and back of that and then sew up the sides. That's like the easiest way to do a lining as far as I know. If anyone has any better suggestions, let me know down below. And I sew that up the sides We're using a stretch stitch because this is stretchy material. And girl, the making of this dress was a journey. I messed it up twice doing this video. <laughs> like the first time I tried to do breast cups on this fabric and the fabric was far too flimsy for it. So I had to scrap that dress entirely and start over from scratch and decided to do my classic tube dress with the gathered front that I always do. Now, once the dress was all put together, I needed to sew on the tool. So what I did was I took my gathered tool pieces in long sections and instead of cutting off the excess, I folded the excess so it would rest on the inside. And by doing this, the tool will jot out more and create more volume, sort of acting like a miniature petticoat on the inside of each layer of tool. And girl, when I tell you, I sewed all this on all 40 layers of this damn tool with a zigzag stitch all around the bottom of this dress. It took forever. Now, once that was sewn together, I tried the dress on and I had to see where the dress met at my bust with my breasts on. So once I had the dress on, I took notes of where my bosom ended and I used a measuring tape to take a measurement from where the top of my dress ended to all the way around the back of my neck to the other side. I cut on a fold that was two inches thick with a half inch seam allowance and the length of it was about 26 and a half inches. It'll be completely different you do it for your own body. And on the second attempt of doing the dress the correct way, I messed up the lining and sewed it in wrong. So I had to completely seam rip out that whole dress and start again. So literally I did this dress three times. Girl, I was so rusty when it came to sewing. Like I haven't done it in so long. It did make me excited about trying new things though. So if you want me to do more sewing on this channel, let me know. Like there's a lot of outfits I'd like to tr like create for you guys. I just have to like, you know, figure it out. We can figure it out together because I'm always learning. And this will create the strap that hides the, you know, the seam on the side of my breastplate. I've done this style dress before in the past, but this is sort of like an updated version of that. I'll be sure to link that video down below. Once that is attached, the base of the dress is done. It's time to start decorating it. Now, I was not the most excited when I heard the runway was all red because red's not really a color I feel that confident in. But I decided to take the challenge and, and try and see how I can make this work for me. My two inspirations were Divine and Pink Flamingos, her red mermaid dress from that, and the Barbie classic doll dress, Solo in the Spotlight. 
the black sequin one. I love that Barbie dress. So I wanted to do sort of a combination of that, something that was campy and dangerous, but also 50s fun, very feminine. I showed you all how to make bows years ago, so I figured I might as well update it for you and give you what I do now. To add stiffness to the bow, I take some felt and I cut a square out of that, and this is gonna act as sort of like the skeleton base to keep the bow nice and stiff. And then I traced around that piece of felt, leaving a bit of seam allowance on our liner and did the same thing on our sequin fabric. And I sewed the liner around the felt. And then it's just a series of tracing and cutting out. I traced around the sequin fabric around our lined felt square and I trimmed our excess and then sewed around that. Now it's time to stick our square inside of our sequin fabric because the sequin fabric is what we want to show. So I cut a hole in the back of the sequin fabric, making sure not to cut a hole through it. You don't want it to go on the other side. It's supposed to be on one side, you cut a hole and you insert the fabric through there. Once our fabric square is inserted, take a chopstick or the end of scissors or something and poke out our ends to make sure, you know, the sewed piece is looking nice and presentable. And then we're gonna create our little square that is going to go in the middle of it to create the bow. Now for this part, I just take a scrap of fabric and the sequins and it's about an inch and a half and a few inches wide. I'm gonna sew a nice little tube of that and then turn it inside of itself, trim the excess and wrap it around the center of our bow square. I did this process two more times. I put a bow at the base of my skirt and a bow for my hair and a bow on the bust. I had to be a bit more modest with this one because with this breastplate I wear, it tends to like smuggle raisins. So I created a bow to help disguise that while I'm getting my picture taken. I sew up the back of that and voila, you have a bow. Look at me, I'm a movie star with Ross Matthews and Quesadilla and in my hotel room in Hollywood, I'm a star. Welcome back, this is the final result. Oh my gosh. I am so sparkly. So this whole process of making this dress was a complete journey. Now, I haven't really worked with this kind of fabric before. It's a stretch sequence. And I will say this, be warned when you make gloves or anything like this out of this kind of material because these sequins catch on everything. Like we already know sequins and hair do not mix. They will just have you like this the whole night. But these gloves, like I would actually touch myself when I was like putting my hand on my hips or something for a pose on picture. And I would just be like, oh, <laughs> my hands would be stacked. My hair just, my bow just fell off, didn't it? <laughs> At least I know I'm on borrowed time with a bow. All right. Okay, I'm back. Now, like I said, this sequence is like the bane of my existence. I would not recommend it. Like, it's so beautiful, but just bear in mind what you're making because if you have to have gloves or something, you're going to be walking around with Velcro body the whole night. And I had to be cautious every time I hug somebody. It's like, be warned, I can't hug you or I'll stick to you and the girls would back off. So they already knew because drag queens now. Now I have to say I was a bit rusty when it came to sewing again. I haven't sewn a dress in so long. And when it came right down to it, I realized it's best just to rest on your laurels. You know, go with what you know. The things you know will never disappoint you and they won't fail you. So I went with a silhouette I was confident with and I knew I could whip up in that short period of time. And I was actually really happy. And I showed you guys my little technique for tool that I actually learned while I was doing it. And it also helps to have a council of friends that know what they're doing that you can rely on because I desperately needed some pointers because I was so rusty with sewing. This has inspired me. If you guys like this, let me know. I'll make more sewing videos. Now, grooming could be an absolute drag, but thankfully I have Manscaped. Use my code Mansfield. That's right, just my last name, Mansfield, and save 20% off your purchase, plus free shipping. It's for your no-no bits. Shh. And like my lipstick, I'm wearing Gerard Cosmetics Mai Tai. Use my code JAMES and save 30% off your purchase. That's code JAMES. So wonderful I had to sing it to you. Now this outfit is perfect, but it is just missing one more thing. The James Vansfield Magical Wig Spray from Black Phoenix Alchemy Lab. Let's just give my hair a spritz. Now my hair smells just like cream soda. Available at blackphoenixalchemylab.com. And I have to take a moment, a Ven moment, and thank some wonderful folks who sent me tips via Venmo. I would like to thank JF and Keith and Keith. Oh my God, you're doing the most. Thank you so much. I appreciate you guys so much for giving me tips on Venmo. You don't know what it means to me and it really does help the channel. So thank you guys so much. You make me better. Now, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And I do mean comment and I do mean subscribe. I'm gonna do something new for you folks today. A post-hypnotic suggestion. Subscribe to my channel. 
Subscribe to my channel. Subscribe to my channel. And until next time, bye. Click here and watch my Aging the Queen blog spectacular special hosted by me, James Mansfield. Or see my show competition, Wig Wars, a 30-minute wig transformation. Come on, click it. You know you want to. If you don't click it, I'll sell your soul so I can come back in my next life as one of Kylie Jenner's Birkin bags. So click it.